Okay, this is a tutorial on how to take a lighting control program, show control program, and link the two together so that you can synchronize your audio and lighting cues. I do recommend using a separate show control program. QLC Plus will play back audio cues, but it's not real great at it, and you'll probably have some problems making it work correctly. This is my website. You can find all the programs that you need on here. It's comutinytech.com slash theatertech. The first thing I'm going to do is go to lighting. There's my QLight controller program. If you click on the emblem here, it will take you to the QLight controller website and you can download the latest version of QLC+. Then go over to show control. Now the program that I used extensively was CSC show control. Really, really like this program. It is a paid for program though. You do have to pay. They have different levels of it. But to me, it was the most flexible and the easiest to use to do a lot of creative things with audio and show control. However, for this demo, I'm going to use uh, Stage Research SFX6. Stage Research just recently have been offering this program at no charge. Um, there is no support for it though and no manual for it so uh, they're basically going another route now and the um, author of the program has been kind enough to say here's the program it's fully functional if you'd like to use it feel free I do suggest that if you decide that you like it and you can use it at least give them a donation because originally this program used to sell for around four hundred dollars so you want to click on stage effects it'll take you to the page there you can download this and they do have the donate button in there for it also. Then the third program that you're going to need is a little program called Loop B1 by Nerds. Uh, Loop B1 is a virtual MIDI cable program. So we're going to use virtual MIDI cables to connect the show control program to the lighting program. So basically is your show control program is going to be controlling everything, but it's going to be sending signals to the lighting program to advance it to the next queue. So click on the loop B1. If you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you'll find your free copy down here and it says it's free for non-commercial personal use only. Commercial use beyond a 30 day evaluation period requires purchase of a commercial use license. I believe their licenses are very reasonable too if you decide that you're gonna uh, use it and you wanna license it commercially. So, But get your copy of loop B1 and then you should be good to go. First thing you're going to want to do is install Loop B1. Once you install it, it will appear over here in your taskbar. I'm just going to bring it up. Now, if you have issues with Loop B and you kind of mess up your ins and your outs, sometimes it can call it cause what we call MIDI feedback. And this little button will go to mute here. If you're having problems with this, it's not running correctly, do what I just did there. You can right click on it, loop B1, open it up and see if this if mute is uh, checked. If it is, uncheck it and then click OK and then you should be back to working once you've corrected, uh, corrected your issues. Okay, I have QLC Plus for up and running. This is a template I used for an earlier demo, but we're going to show you how we connect this queue list to the show control program. I install my stage research SFX6. I'm going to start this up. By the way, all these programs uh, are PC programs. Uh, I might do another video possibly with some uh, Mac programs for the Mac users out there. So I'm going to say create a new production. It's going to ask me for production name. I'm going to make, uh, say, demo sync. Not the best typer. And then you can fill in some other information like author, description, notes, and click OK. Next kind of thing it's going to ask you, since it is primarily a sound program uh, for your sound card configuration, I do recommend that uh, if you're using this with a tower or desktop computer, you're using a sound card in it. Um, or if you're using a laptop, I would suggest using a USB external audio device. Coming out of the headphone jacks can give you a lot of static, a lot of other issues with that. So especially if you're using a laptop, I would recommend using uh, getting a USB audio device. And if you check back on my website, and if you go to 
stroke control. Yes, there we are, USB audio. There are several suggestions on here for USB audio devices. And I always buy ones that have not only audio out, but have MIDI out, because that way I can use it to actually control an actual lighting board or lighting device. But again, this tutorial is about two pieces of software running everything. So, so sound card, we get that all patched up and running. We're good to go. It's going to set up the desktop here in default mode for us. All right, it's, there is no manual for this, so I'll do a quick tutorial about how to get sounds in here. Um, one of the easiest ways is simply to drag and drop. So I have a little file called Short Drama. I can just grab this from my desktop, drop it in there, and it goes in. It's now in as a sound file. I can click this to select it. And um, when this is yellow, it means it is queued up and hit go, go. Hopefully you can hear that playing. Okay, and then when the file plays, once it's done, it'll be green over here and then no color over here. Okay, so we've got our sound in. Um, another way of getting them in, I'm going to delete that for a moment, is you can take the sound icon over here, drag this in, drop it anywhere in the queue list, opens up an Explorer file menu here, then you can find your, your sound this way. So I'm just going to go Desktop and MP3 Short Drama. So either way, if you have your, uh, your sound file stored somewhere else, that's a quick way to just drop this in and our sound files in there. All right, next thing we're going to need is a MIDI command. So I'm going to take the MIDI and drop this in here. If I click on the MIDI, you're going to see that this comes up with an X. It means that there is an issue that MIDI is not set up yet for this program. So what I've got to do is go up here to File, click on Production Properties, It'll open up a window. I come down here and do MIDI patch. I have to create a new MIDI patch. It says MIDI out one. I'm going to select and I'm going to select loop B internal MIDI. And then this last part here, don't forget to do this. I often forget to do this and then things don't work. You have to click activate or active up there. Click OK. So now you set up your MIDI device. So now we have the MIDI queue selected. Down here in your properties window, it's still showing an X because we have to set this up for properties. First thing we're going to do is MIDI output and I'm going to select MIDI out 1. So now that is selected and we have MIDI out 1. Then we have to put a command in. One of the most common commands is a note on, note off message. So I'm going to do a note on message. It automatically fills in the time over here at zero. So that means this command is going to be immediately issued. We're going over channel one. If you know anything about MIDI, there's channels one through 16. So channel one is fine. QLC plus will recognize it. Now these next two fields of data over here, they go from zero to 127. Well, I'm just going to say, uh, let's say 20 for this. I'll double click and type in 20. It gives me hexadecimal. This is this first data field over here is the note, whether it be a C sharp or a D or D sharp. We don't really need to be concerned with that. Just remember that you put in note number 20 here. So we've got our MIDI message started. We've got a note on command. We've told it what note. And then we also have to fill in the velocity. This would be, if I was playing a MIDI keyboard, how hard I'm hitting the key. We have to have some kind of velocity, not just zero. So I'm going to type in 64. It goes anywhere from... Um, 0 to 127, 0 being no velocity, which means the note doesn't get played. So you have to enter some kind of velocity. Now, another really important uh, fact here, and you need to do this. We're going to be sending a note on command to QLC Plus to play this cue. We also need to send a note off command so that it's completed. Otherwise, QLC will sit there. When you try to send another note on command to it, um, it'll say, uh, I'm sorry. I already have a note on command coming at me and nobody ever turned it off. So it won't respond. It'll only respond the first time. So make sure you do this. You need to include a note off command. So we have a second one here. We're going to say note off. Timing. I'm just going to say one second. So it'll do the note on command and then one second later it'll issue the note off command. Channel one again. Now, we need to make sure it's the same note that we used from before. So I'm going to type in 20 here. 
So it's the same note. And this time we do want a zero in the velocity field over there because there's going to be zero velocity. We're basically turning the note off. So you are set to go. So now when we, we uh, click up here, we'll see that this is active and it can be used as a MIDI cue. So if we were to select this and fire go, it would fire that MIDI cue and send out that command. Now here's the problem. We want to synchronize this so this audio file and this MIDI cue basically get fired at the same time. Really, really easy. Take this weight icon, come up here and drop it in between the two. We're basically connecting now the audio and the MIDI cue together. We're telling it to wait. The default wait time up here is five seconds. Wait five seconds before you play this next cue or connect it in. We're going to change that. I'm going to double click here and change this to zero seconds. So in other words, as soon as this fires, or we fire that cue, it's going to also fire this MIDI cue at the same time. And if you watch, if I select up here, if you watch what happens here, you'll see all three get selected. Also notice that there's a little arrow up here. What that is, it's basically saying this is all connected together now. So this audio cue is going to cause this wait command to fire and is going to cause this MIDI command to fire also. So if I click go, you'll see that the MIDI command fired. There was a weight of zero and it fired and our audio file is playing. Now we need to connect this in. So let's take a look here. Go back. We're set to go. I'm going to take this over to this side of the computer. Whoops. Keep it over there. I'm going to bring up my QLC window over here. So I put the windows side by side. You can arrange this however you'd like it to be. In our inputs and outputs uh, over here on QLC, make sure for inputs, let me just go full screen with this, make sure for inputs that we did loop B internal MIDI selected as our input. Profile, you don't need anyone. Make sure that you have loop B internal MIDI selected as your input device in order for this to work. Here's my cue list. I am in edit mode. I'm going to double click here. I'm going to select the next cue command. Now I'm just going to tell it to listen and auto detect the MIDI command that I'm going to send for it. So I'm going to say auto detect. I'm going to come back over here. I've selected the MIDI command. I'm just going to click go. And we'll just stop that out and play. Notice that it automatically filled in the command. It said it's on channel one. It's a MIDI command and it assigned it a number here. Click OK. In the inputs and outputs over here, as far as profile goes, you can select none. You really don't need a profile for this because we're just using this MIDI command. Back to the virtual console. So we are now connected and we can fire that cue. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to start over here in QLC Plus. I'm going to go to run. Um, we have to get this started, so that's why I put my blackout command in first. So the blackout command is in there. Now let's say scene one is the scene that we're going to use and fire from over here. So this audio cue and this MIDI cue will fire at the same time. If you're watching, when I fire this from here, it will advance this to, to scene one. So it's that easy. We've actually connected the scene. From there, if you want, you can come back over to QLC Plus and you can continue running the rest of your show this way until you have another cue that you might want to use audio for, uh, audio for. To be honest with you, what I used to do, and let me just come back over here and stop this for a minute. Back in this window and double click and we've stopped that. I'll go out of run mode. What I used to do was run the entire show from the show control program. So I would add more MIDI cues up here to just fire my lighting cues. That way my operator that's running the program could just keep firing MIDI cues. And it's very, very easy. I'm going to select this MIDI cue here and say make a copy of this. Now I'm going to say paste. 
paste, 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 paste. So I have all these same MIDI commands that will fire these cues over here. You can change the number of the cue. You can change the title and description so that it matches what's going on over here. And let's just go back and see how this works then. So I'm back at my top again. I'm going to come over to QLC Plus. Say let's go to run mode. Start my cue list by hitting the first one. Now, my first cue is going to come with audio, so I'm going to click go. Okay, now notice if I click go again, the audio will keep playing, and I'm advancing through my scenes. So over here, this audio did not stop. It kept playing. Um, I'll do another tutorial to show you how to fade out audio and stop audio with uh, SFX6 here. But notice that I can keep going through now and just keep getting go and issuing MIDI commands and progressing through my lighting cues over on the left. So again, this is the way I used to work it just because if I had a student running this for me, all they had to do is keep, keep clicking go here. Now, if something happens that things get out of sync a little bit, you do have to look back and say, you know, okay, things are out of sync and then we need to pick it up from where we need to be and make sure that the two lists are synchronized because it doesn't automatically synchronize. 